I spend most of my waking hours, and honestly, a lot of the sleeping hours too, thinking about reading and researching climate change and the environment. Which means, most of the time, my brain is full of scary facts, a fair amount of sadness, and a lot of anger and frustration at the seemingly little progress we've made maintaining a planet that is a good home for everyone. But today, I want to talk about the good stuff. I want to talk about some of the progress, fill your heart with warm fuzzies, joyful victories of the climate and environmental movement. That's right, we're going to talk about some lawsuits. I promise, it's gonna be great. It's no secret that I am a big fan of Earth Justice, but just in case you haven't been following along with the exploits of this nonprofit environmental organization fighting for legal protections for people and the planet, let's talk about some of the incredible work they've done this year. They protected a super endangered whale by getting a court to rule on some of the fishing gear that kills those whales. The DC Circuit Court of Appeals found that the Environmental Protection Agency was illegally failing to control ozone pollution, or smog, which means the EPA must find a way to reduce that air pollution, like all the gross stuff coming from coal plants in upwind states. A win for both clean air and the climate. And they got a court to halt the construction of a copper mine that was set to destroy some of the ancestral burial grounds, ancient village sites, and sacred springs of the Toho Odom Nation, the Pasqualia Key Tribe, and the Hopi Tribe. And that's just since August. Now, if you'll let me fangirl for one moment, this morning I talked to a lawyer who presented oral arguments at the Supreme Court. His name is David Henkin, and he works for Earth Justice. I know. Shocking, right? The case County of Maui versus Hawaii Wildlife Fund. We're representing community groups in Maui that are trying to address a problem with a wastewater treatment plant. The county drilled injection wells about 200 feet down to go directly into the groundwater underneath the facility, with the design being to dispose of these three to five million gallons of treated sewage every day through the groundwater, using the groundwater like a sewer to convey the pollution out into the ocean. Now this whole case, it's about the Clean Water Act, which if you're unfamiliar, is a pretty hefty piece of legislation. If you like reading laws, I can totally recommend it. Great beat read. If you don't, it basically sets out how the US government regulates pollution going into the water and the water quality of things like rivers and lakes. Important to this case, it says you need a permit to discharge a pollutant into a body of water. With the Clean Water Act, Congress tried to regulate every source of pollution. And the idea being that if we get all of the sources of pollution under a permitting system, then we can look at each water body that's receiving that pollution and make sure that any pollution that's entering the water body is not degrading its quality. The county has taken the position that under the Clean Water Act, they admit that they would have needed a permit that would control the pollution going to the ocean if they'd put a pipe directly into the ocean. But they say that because of using the groundwater as a sewer, they can evade the Clean Water Act. And so the issue before the Supreme Court is quite simply this, can polluters like the county avoid complying with the Clean Water Act and use our, our oceans, our lakes, our rivers as dumping grounds for the pollution simply by putting the pollution down through the groundwater rather than going directly into the rivers, lakes, and oceans. This type of pollution crops up in all different types of situations, not only with wastewater treatment plants like the counties, but mining operations, chemical plants, petroleum pipelines. Uh, there's a case the court is currently holding pending the resolution of our case involving a pipeline in South Carolina that breached and spilled about 400,000 gallons of petroleum product into the ground, into the groundwater that's polluting the Savannah River. And so if you look at the industries that are lined up on the side of the county in the case, you can appreciate what's really going on here. It's not about a single county wastewater facility, but it's every polluting industry in the country that wants to have license to destroy our nation's waters. David's been working this case for seven years. He's seen it all the way through the federal court and the federal appeals court, and now the Supreme Court. We're in it for the long haul. This case on Maui has been going on only seven years. I say only seven years because my longest running case has been going on for over 20. So we're in it to win it. We also stick around till the job's done. And after the job's done, we make sure that nothing happens to unwind those victories. And fingers crossed, one of those victories in the case of Hawaii Wildlife Fund versus the County of Maui will be announced in spring of 2020. But while we're waiting for the folks up in the Supreme Court to make a decision, there are still tons of things Earth Justice and all of us can be doing. While we're waiting for the Supreme Court to rule, uh, the main thing we're doing is continuing to press on all the other fronts to protect the environment. And folks can keep abreast of all the things that we're doing, including the latest developments on this case, by going to our website, earthjustice.org. We also encourage people to sign up for action alerts, which you can do through the website, because 
If the court goes the wrong way on this, we're going to have to be doing a full court press in the courts, but also in the court of public opinion to make sure that our elected officials understand that we won't stand for dirty water anymore. And of course, this isn't a regular video, it's a cool video. Specifically, this is a Project for Awesome video, which means that not only can you help out Earth Justice by donating directly, checking out their website, or getting involved in an action, but you can go to projectforawesome.com and vote for Earth Justice, so that a portion of the funds raised will go to giving the Earth a good lawyer. What are you waiting for? Go vote for Earth Justice!